Are you desperately trying to lose weight? You have type 2 diabetes? Maybe you even have cancer? Nothing seems to be working? You're on metformin? You have been on Ozempic? Today, let's discuss metformin, cancer, and possibly a bit of weight loss. Hi, I'm Denise and welcome to Travels on My Chair. I think that those of you who are following me know that when you tune into this channel you're not going to get someone running around doing some crazy things because you know that's not me but if I can find information to share with you I'll do that and sometimes it'll be controversial and sometimes it won't but you know you need to know I'm not a doctor I say it every time but you know you may forget because maybe I look like one I don't know a study that was done way back in 2005 almost vintage years, had some interesting things about metformin in that study. Metformin plays a wide range of molecular pathways that plays a very important part in a lot of different cancers. It seems to work well with anti-cancer meds, so such as chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and uh, immunotherapy. And now there are newer studies that are coming forward that are dealing with metformin not only uh, in pertaining to cancer but also pertaining to weight loss. Metformin's main purpose is to lower blood sugar when you are type 2 diabetic. It improves insulin resistance in the liver which causes a lot of sugar production in your system. This study showed that if you are taking metformin, your chances of getting cancer may reduce by as much as 40%. Hey, we've all, we've all seen studies, right? I remember one years ago on breast cancer, and it's blatantly said, this was I think in 2007, 2008, if you are taking letrozole for breast cancer, your chances of getting secondary breast cancer are reduced by over 60% if you're on this letrozole. And then it was proven that, yes, it did lessen your chance of getting secondary breast cancer, but 60% might have been a bit of a stretch, you know? So let's say your doctor has prescribed metformin for your type 2 diabetes and you are getting prone to some of the side effects, which could be constipation, diarrhea, muscle ache. Uh, does that sound familiar? Isn't that some of the side effects that can happen with a Zempic? Just saying. Metformin reduces the amount of sugar being reduced into your bloodstream. If you have uncontrollable diabetes, kidney problems, liver problems, circulatory problems, or heart problems, your doctor may find that this is not a drug that is going to be suited to your particular illness, especially breathing problems or circulatory problems and heart, you know? Now, if you find at the beginning of taking metformin that you are experiencing side effects, then talk to your doctor because there's also a slow-acting metformin, which I didn't know about until I started doing some research for this video. And it will slow the release and it, you might be able to tolerate that better. And also, one of the things when you're on metformin and have type 2 diabetes, when you're doing your yearly blood test, you may find that your B12 will come in low, and that is common with metformin. So in that case, then talk to your doctor 
about the results of that blood work and then just go get go and get yourself I think um, it's either 500 or 1000 milligrams of uh, B12 put it under your tongue every morning and that'll and that'll take care of that low B12 problem so one of the things with me with uh, type 2 diabetes is every once in a while I would get blurry vision, headaches, sometimes a little sweaty, feel a little dizzy, and you know, blindly went on with my life, didn't really think about it, but in actual fact it was because my blood sugars were really low, and it wasn't until I started pricking my finger, not <clears throat> multiple not multiple times during the day, but certainly three or four times during the week. And my doctor would get me to prick my finger in the morning and my blood sugar, sure enough, was getting low. So he suggested that I keep beside the bed either juice or a soft candy and even carry that with me when I go somewhere. So if I experience any of those symptoms of feeling dizzy or lightheaded or achy, get something sweet and that'll boost you up until you can get to eating a regular meal. So early on with the type 2 diabetes when I was having trouble getting adjusted, you know my A1C or my blood sugars adjusted, there'd be certain things that would happen like I'd have to urinate all the time and it was kind of smelly and it was yellow and I didn't sort of think about it but that was when my blood sugars were really high. And I, that usually happens when I'm under stress and I'm not eating balanced meals. And even now that I have pretty much my A1C, my blood sugars under control for the most part. And this happened just as an example. About a month ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt, huh, I, I didn't feel right. That's a hard thing to say. I didn't feel sick, but I didn't feel right. I just didn't feel like I could get a deep breath and I had a, a little bit of a fuzzy headache. I keep some wine gums beside the bed. I took a wine gum, sucked on it, and had a drink of water, and it went away, and I went back to sleep, and I was fine. But that's, that's what can happen when your blood sugars can get low, and you just have to be aware of it so that y you can deal with it and not get into a situation, you know? But guys, if you have a slow or a rapid heart rate or you feel generally really unwell and you can't put your finger on it, it may be that you need to get medical attention as soon as you can. Don't play around with it. With diabetes, excess fat in the liver leads to impaired function of the pancreas. So metformin helps reduce the liver production of glucose and reduces insulin resistance when our blood sugar levels are high. It also acts on a hormone called GDF15, an important hormone, which allows your body to be more efficient in controlling your blood sugar levels. GDF15 seems to help with weight loss a little bit. And this hormone is actually one of the hormones that is used in the manufacture of drugs such as Ozempic and Wedgovi. Another one is GLP-1, which is very effective at lowering the blood sugars. It works within your brain to help reduce the cravings and the need for food. Metformin increases the hormone GDF-15, and that hormone helps you feel full and helps with the cravings for food. Now these studies are just beginning to scratch the surface of just exactly how much weight loss these hormones will help what you with and uh, the figures are going a little bit all over the place. Generally though 3.5 percent of your body weight is the figure that they're coming up with the magic number. So are you going to get like crazy skinny when you're on metformin? Uh, no. I mean, remember its main purpose is for your insulin and your diabetes not to make you a skinny mini. Metformin should never be used as a standalone weight loss drug. That is not what it's being manufactured for. And it's an old drug. It's been around many, many, many years. And you're not going to find a lot of research anymore into that drug because 
it's a cheap drug to manufacture and the drug companies aren't going to make a ton of money off it. So don't hold your breath. <laughs> For myself, metformin has helped to control my diabetes and has continued, so backtrack, my diabetes was out of control and my numbers were climbing. The metformin, I was at the maximum dosage of metformin, which is four pills a day. And the doctor, that was when my doctor told me to go on a Zempic. I've talked about a Zempic. I've talked about my hell on a Zempic. Look back at some of my other videos. Um, it was a horrible time for me, but I have to admit in all honesty that it got my diabetes under control. I was on it for a year and I frankly, I think I could have been on it for six months and would have been fine. I haven't gained the weight back. I still have a lot of trouble eating a lot of different foods. Like I can't eat anything uh, spicy. I don't like there's a lot of stuff I can't eat or don't want to eat. I have to say, I have to thank Ozempic for getting me on the right path. I would never have used it for weight loss. I strictly used it to get my type 2 diabetes under control because otherwise I was going to have to go on insulin and we were, my doctor was very concerned. You've got MS, you've got cancer. The last thing you need to do is worry about the problems that type 2 diabetes can cause you, such as circulation, vision problems, and all that. We need to get a handle on this. This is important. And I said, yeah, you're right. And that was why we went on a Zempic. Would I go on it again? Boy, oh boy, the jury's out on that. I, You know what? A couple of years ago, I'd say, absolutely not. That was hell. But in retrospect, as I'm looking back now, maybe I would. If it meant getting my overall diabetic health in, on track, I don't know. So thank you for watching today. Thank you to my subscribers, new and old, for tuning in with me. You know, I'm not the most exciting crayon in the box, right? But I care about you guys. And from the comments that you've been making, a lot of you need to be cared about. I don't think, I'm getting the feeling that there's a lot of questions that are coming up about your health that you're not really able to talk about with perhaps family or even maybe with your doctor maybe he's pushing you out the door I mean nowadays in, in BC anyway when you go to see the doctor you've got 10 to 15 minutes max if you've got type 2 diabetes or health issues or you're dealing with the throes of a Zempic whatever keep a journal Oh, you're going, no, I, I swear it saved my bacon. So I have a day planner that I got at the dollar store and it has big squares. And I mark down every day, whenever I have a bowel movement, a general, if I was feeling not well, if I'm feeling great, you know, I'm not going to put that down, but if I'm unwell, I'll, I'll put why or what I think is going on with me. Uh, changes of medication, uh, a couple of times a week I take my blood pressure, two or three times a week I prick my finger, I mark all those numbers down. And then I look at it because I only see my doctor physically about every six months and about every three months over the phone. So he's not looking at me, he doesn't know what I look like or you know if I've lost a bunch of weight or anything like that. So it's up to me to keep track of my body so that I can share that information with him and if I go to see him know that I've got 10 or 15 minutes now I'm not going to go in with my journal lay it out in front of him and say okay read this doctor no I'll give him the highlights the reader's digest version so to speak okay so that I can say okay so over the course of the last three months averaging blood pressure has been this averaging blood sugars have been this I've generally been well but there's been a couple of times that I want to talk to you about because I haven't been well and I haven't been sure about what's going on. Now I also have to tell you I do this with the oncologist too so that when she calls and says how are you doing I don't instantly just say fine and that's why in when she called me in February we were able to get to the bottom of some of the issues I was having with my medication. Keep a journal. You will be surprised at how much you forget in a week or a month 
or a year. I'll have to go back sometimes and watch some of my old videos so I know what the hell I was doing a year ago. I know it's getting, I'm getting old, whatever. Anyway, I do appreciate you guys. You know, you, you are such an important part of my life now. I can't even imagine what it'd be like without you. Next time I'm going to talk about the carnivore diet, which I'm getting a lot of comments on and I've been hesitant to talk about it, but I will. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.